Morning. What's morning. Better? What's better morning. than being wonder? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Raise your morning. hand if you're annoyed when you say, thank morning. goodness it's Friday and you're a realtor. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everybody. So excited to see so many of you on the call today. And I know we have a lot of uh, a lot of visitors as well for some other fabulous brokerages and market centers. So thanks everybody for coming on. We have a lot of great information today. And I know that everybody's excited to hear Sue Adler talk to us as well. So we're gonna we're gonna save the best for a little bit later in the meeting. And uh, let's, let's do what we always do and start getting our head in a really positive mindset. And let's go to our bucket fills. Anybody have anything they'd like to share as a bucket fill? Pat Howard, anybody want to say anything about me? Vanessa's got her hand up. <laughs> I just want to have three closings this month. So August is a great month for me. Woohoo! Go! Woo. And if I'm not mistaken, you even took awesome. a couple of days off, Susie, right? Pardon? And if I'm not mistaken, you even took a couple of days off? Yes, I am in Lewis, Delaware. I believe it's off the quarantine list, which is a blessing. I can go back and do some work. That's awesome. Nice. That is terrific. Shannon, can I go? Yes, you may. Just a big old bucket fill to our culture committee and to Jean, who I know is going to pop in and give some great info later. But it's just so amazing what the committee is doing and what she's doing. And I'm excited for her to share more later, but I'm beyond grateful for her hard work. Yeah, I, I echo that right with you. That's we're, we're, I'm amazed at, at Jean and what the whole, uh, the whole culture committee is doing. So thank you guys so much. What else? Any other bucket fills? Yes. Uh, if I can join as well, um, this is Evgenia. So I wanted to give the huge, huge thank you to my colleagues who were helping me while I was on vacation. Margareta Vamish, who recently joined our uh, company, and she was my boots on the ground, and Jenny De Virgilio. So as a result, I have <laughs> several new properties on the contract. So really, really grateful for their help. That is terrific. Thank you. Anybody else? I have a bucket fill. Let's hear it. Uh, so I want to bucket fill you, Shannon, uh, you. for taking on the dual team leader position and just rocking it and making sure that we're all on the same page and really doing the best you can. So we appreciate you. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Jackie. That, that means so much. Thank you. I have a bucket fill. Let's hear it. All right. I'm so grateful I got um, a present from the team. Um, we just had a baby boy and I received fantastic clothes and balloons and Mary also hooked me up to a shadowing of an open house because I'm a new agent and it was very um, insightful and I'm so, so happy for that. And I'm also just want to say I'm available in case anyone needs help or shadowing or covered. So I said I need to share that. I'm so grateful and I thank everyone for that gift. My boy is very happy for that. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, we're so happy for your wonderful news. Congratulations on the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. I have a bucket, Phil. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Evans Modalidi. I, um, I just joined Vanessa's team, Public Properties Group, um, and the onboarding process, as I'm sure lots of you know, um, is a little different now. And so I just wanted to bucket fill Carrie for always being available to answer any questions and for guiding me and all of the new agents um, into feeling a real part of the family. So thanks, Carrie, for all of your guidance. 
and texts and emails and calls. <laughs> You're welcome. That's sweet of you to say. And for those that don't know, you know, Mark is is brand new here and has been a wonderful uh, breath of fresh air. And he's exactly the kind of people we love have join our KW family. And so to Vanessa also, thank you so much for inviting Mark. Today. I'd like to add, we uh, had another baby this week and that was Giancarlo Cassio and his wife, Kristen, welcome there uh, first, a baby girl, Alessandra. Yay, lots of babies. Heard of a few puppies too. Allison got a puppy this week. So congratulations on that, Allison. John Westfall Kwong, I see you have a hand up. Do you want to chime in? No? Okay. All right, Any anything else anybody want to add? Or should we get to some meat and potatoes? Let's, let's do that. Um, you guys all know that our goal in having you come to these, to these meetings is to help consolidate data that's out there that you guys need to know to talk to your clients. So as always, we like to go through some of that information, help you guys be armed with slides and data and graphic that you need to share with your clients so that you can best help them. Um, let me just, I'm, let me just grab the first slide. Let's see, I'm not seeing the slide. Are you guys seeing the first slide? You are? Yes. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, hold on one <coughs> second. All right, so, so um, you have the showtime slide up or the? Showing time. Okay, terrific. For some reason, I'm having some tech problems, so you, you, you guys might have to walk me through that. But the showing time, um, this showing time thing, you guys know we've been looking at, we've been watching week by week because I believe it is gonna be the first indicator before we even see anything happening with under contracts and things, before we see that ticking down, we're likely to see showing uh, showings tick down. So I feel this is the very, this is the indicator that gives us the best look into the future. So as you guys can see, the orange one, of course, is the line that um, is this year versus blue last year. So we're still operating much, much higher than where we were last year. Um, okay, the next slide, is, the next two slides, I think, are really the most important of the day. Um, after that, we hope you don't tune out because we got Sue Adler coming, but this is really the meat and potato information that you need to know to talk to your buyers and your sellers so that you can help them make the best decision in their life. Uh, so if you look at this, the, the far right is where we are now in terms of month supply of inventory. The dark line in the middle is exactly a year ago. We are down over 70% with month supply of inventory on the market. Now I see quite a few new people on the call. So let me give you the one minute explanation for those of you who are new and might not know what month supply of inventory means. It means if we were to add no new inventory to the market and things continue to go under contract at the rate at which they have been going, we would run out of inventory in 1.7 months. I've been selling real estate for 16 years. I don't believe I've ever seen it that low. Um, so the, the, what we're looking at here are most of the towns that you guys service in and around Westfield and in and around Summit. Now, if I'm talking to a seller, obviously I'm going to be saying, look, if you guys are thinking of selling now or anytime in the near future, your home is going to be much more in demand than we can anticipate, you know, that we've, been, that we've seen in the past and that we can count on going forward. If you're talking to a buyer, the most important reason to show this slide to a buyer is to help them understand if they want to buy a home, if they're genuinely motivated to buy a home, they are going to be competing against a lot of people for very little inventory. So they're going to need to absolutely put their best and highest price forward. Um, let's jump over to the next slide. Um, you know, Howard's a bit of a nerd on some of this stuff. Howard, no offense. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating when I say Howard ran over to me yesterday, sat down right next to me, probably a little 
closer than his social distance and said, oh my God, you got to look at this because this stuff just thrills him. This number on the far right is a big jump up. Now these are weekly and this is median price. So you kind of see that even though there's been some up and down, some up and down, this is by far in the last week, the biggest jump we've seen in median pricing. So again, for sellers, if you're sitting in front of a seller who's saying, I'm not sure if I want to sell now versus in a year or two years, you can't tell them what to do. You don't have a crystal ball, but the best thing you can do to come from contribution and add value to their life is make sure they understand the implication of this slide and the previous slide. Make sure they see this slide and the previous slide so that they're not just making decisions on gut and hunches and what they're hearing anecdotally around town. This information that shows us irrespective of the future, which is riddled with uncertainty, we know right now they have a very good chance of getting more for their home than they would have gotten recently. And I believe most likely more than they may get in the coming, in, you know, in the, in the coming year. Um, so yeah, let I also mentioned to Shannon um, yesterday that uh, Susie Sharif and I had been talking earlier in the day. And this is also great information to share as you're making your daily uh, touches with with folks I'm saying, you know, I, I understand if, if, uh, if you feel settled and, and sitting tight, but um, maybe there's somebody in your sphere that you know that I should reach out for that I could help and that this information might be um, influential in, in helping them decide to make a move. Great, great point, Howard. Thanks so much for, for adding that. Um, let's go a little bit more granular in some of our towns. So if you, if you are somebody who's inclined to, to share information on social media, this, this one combines both our summit area towns and our Westfield area towns. I have them broken out for you later. The most important thing that I'd like us to look at right now is that right column. This is by week. We're tracking each of the towns. So um, what you'll notice is the highest number we had there a couple weeks ago, 219. There were a couple of, I guess, I guess we were up as high as 223. Um, that's the number of homes going under contract in our towns each week. We are going to struggle to continue to see that number stay high because I don't have to tell you guys, you know, there's just nothing out there to buy. So um, you guys are feeling the pain of this, um, but this, this is information that helps you without having to do all the research yourself so that you can see what is what town by town. Um, let's go to the next one. We've got this just in a, in maybe a visually better form, again, for you guys posting on social media, sending out in newsletters to your clients, or when you're sitting down at the listing table talking to people, you can, you can see that there's just, there's some downward pressure right now on the number of deals we're going to, we're going to be able to get done, not for lack of demand, just for lack of inventory. Um, the next slides I have for you guys are the, are the same, but just broken up. This is just the Westfield area towns in case that's more helpful for you in talking to your clients. And then the next one is the visual graphic of that. Again, we provide this stuff to you guys because we know you don't necessarily all have time to be making these each week. And this is the story you need to be telling to your clients and everybody in your sphere. Um, the next one is, uh, let's go, let's keep going. Those, those, are, those are just the same slides as before, but there's, there's together with the areas and then separate. This is very similar data, but it's coming directly from broker metrics. So you guys know your clients and you know we like to assess when we're talking to people, are they high D, are they high I, high C? Um, so the analytic types might, you know, can like the information in different forms. So we've provided a lot for you guys here. The next one is just a little of our own horn tooting. Um, these are the top 10 brokerages in the state, or excuse me, in the entire GSMLS. And this is Morris, Essex, and Union County. And as you guys can see, um, at the far left, we have 3% market share of the entire GSMLS, which is a, you know, almost 30% more than our next closest competitor. So 
We know you guys are working your butts off out there, coming from contribution every day, helping your clients and um, they need us now more than ever. You know, my heart was warmed this morning. I saw, I think it was Marianne Slam posted pictures of a backyard birthday party from some clients. She'd just gotten into a new home and she had a gorgeous picture of a little girl running around with balloons in her backyard. And, you know, I know it's not lost on you guys. We talk about this stuff in units and numbers and volume and all that stuff, but they're people and we know that. And it's exciting that you guys are able to help so many people in what is really a turbulent, turbulent time. Um, the next is I just pulled up a couple of headlines for you guys. You know, Howard always says, Gary Keller always says, we need to be the economist of choice for our clients. So I don't care so much what your opinions are. You're all entitled to your own. None of us know exactly what's coming. None of us have the absolute right way to present it to our clients. But we've put together just a few things that might be talking points for you, between you and your clients, if it resonates for you. One of the things that I think is really contributing to the lack of inventory, I mean, there are a lot of reasons, right? But this particular article says 39% of all young millennials, which they're describing as being between the ages of 24 and 29, are moving back home. I speak with some authority on this topic. I right now have all three of my three home. There were supposed to be zero. Um, two are staying for the, for the uh, indefinite future. You and, and I'm not alone, of course, you guys all, some of you are in the same boat and all of you know people in the same boat. This stops people from wanting to move who would have otherwise been downsizers. So that's an important thing for us to keep our eye on. Um, the next one is, you know, anecdotally, we all talk about um, that we know everyone's fleeing the suburb, excuse me, fleeing the city. And I've really been trying to keep my eyes open for things that can give us more than just anecdotal information. I haven't found any great source that really, I feel tells me how many people are expecting to be leaving New York City. But I can tell you that according to this report, they interviewed several movers. There were a couple of movers who simply are not taking any more clients. Um, a mover who said they're up 30% from a year ago, they don't have any more trucks than that. So it's not, it's not like us, right? We can keep selling homes as long as there are homes to sell. These guys are maxing out. Um, I did also hear from one real estate attorney recently and someone else refuted this, but I heard from one real estate attorney that they actually said that some of the title companies just weren't doing any more closings in August. Again, don't believe that it's not true. If somebody wants to close in August, you, they'll they'll get closed. Acres acres will close them. But um, all of our all of our associated professionals that work with us are feeling the pain just as much as we are. Um, you know, lastly, the, the last uh, headline slide I want to talk to you guys about here is we could find as many opinions on the on the economy as there are people. So I in, in no way am making my opinion here about where I think we're going. But the message you need to be telling your clients is simply uncertainty. For all we know, the market could get better. For all we know, the market could get worse. None of us have a crystal ball. We do know, however, that the stock market is way up and the GDP is way down. And we have an election coming. What I would be saying if I were sitting with sellers right now is we know what we have right now. We have no idea what's coming in the future. Right now, we are, we are at a, in a bubble. Who knows how long it will last, but we know for sellers, the prices are high, there's no inventory, and there's tons of buyers. This should remind people that if they're having the debate, do they sell now or do they later, if their life can accommodate selling now, we know we can get them a great price right now. So hopefully those are helpful things for you guys to be talking to your clients about. And um, we love those conversations. So feel free to reach out to any of us on leadership team anytime because we love talking about this stuff. So if you guys see other articles that you think are helpful, please, please post them in, on our Facebook pages. Um, share them with your colleagues. That's our culture here. We all love to share information with each other. And thanks to all of you for doing that so often. Let's switch gears a little. Another favorite topic of mine is mega camp. Now, for those of you who are newer, you know that family reunion and mega camp are our two biggest um, uh, 
trainings of the year, conferences, conventions, whatever we want to call them. Usually there's many of us going to Austin in August or September each year for mega camp, which absolutely will set your hair on fire. There is such great information. All the powerhouses in the industry are there as panelists. There's breakout sessions. There's so much to learn. I attribute going to mega camp and family reunion as instrumental in my success when I was building my business. You can't know what to do at a high level unless you're talking to others who are doing it. There is no better place than this. And so here's what most of you know. You're getting really lucky this year because mega camp is going to be all virtual. So while we miss the fun of going to Austin, we are going to see all the great stuff virtually. It's, so it's very affordable. I believe the price now that the early bird special is, is over is $119. We're going to be doing some other cool things I'll tell you about in one second. Let's just watch a short little video about mega camp. All right, awesome. So here's what you need to know. Number one, sign up now. Um, number two, if you have some um, friends and cooperating realtors that are not currently with us and you'd like to invite them, we're gonna help make that, uh, make that a reality for you guys. So you need to reach out to me before you pass on that invitation to everybody because we have some special things we can do. Um, for people who are, who are cappers out there in the industry, we'll certainly be willing to cover the cost of them uh, um, attending Mega Camp. Also, Kara and I are busy working on something that will be socially distanced outside that at least one of the days of Mega Camp will be able to do it together and network and have some cool food and drinks, etc. So not ready for an announcement on that yet, but we're putting together some fun things that would be be great to have have as many of you as possible as well as some some outside agents I know will be joining us. Sign up right away. I'm I'm imploring all of you to do it. I promise you you'll you'll find it worthwhile. And and quickly, can I just add Shannon that that uh, I really hope everybody on the call and I mean anybody who's listening um, puts some thought into making sure they can put themselves in front of what's being made available to us. Uh, so many years I've gone listen to Gary Keller speak and thought of so many of you guys that are on this call today, wishing that you could hear his words. Well, here's a way for you guys to hear what Gary Keller is saying and, and, and to really see his pioneering um, inventiveness, his genius firsthand. Um, it's in a way my dream come true that you guys have access to uh, this this year in a way we never have before. So please, please, if you're on this call, take some time to, to block out the calendar and, and, and put yourself in front of these trainings. They'll, they'll never be more available to you than on this occasion. Please, please block off the time. September 15, 16, 17. Um, let's turn it over to three of my five favorite guys, John, Matt, and Brian. Tell us what we need to know about what's going on in the mortgage world, please. Yeah, good morning, everybody. So I um, hope all is well with everyone. Uh, mortgage is pretty crazy right now. There's tons of changes that have happened. Uh, and I just want to inform you of a couple. Uh, and then the other guys are going to say some things as well. But if you have a self-employed borrower, uh, there's been some significant changes from an underwriting perspective for self-employed borrowers now. So in addition to get, you know, a P&L and tax returns and other various uh, CPA related documents. They're now asking us for three months bank statements to see the liquidity of that business. 
Um, this really has changed because we've never really had to get that granular of information. So if you have a self-employed borrower um, and they come back to you and say, why are they asking for all this information? Um, it's not a guaranteed rate thing. Uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have instituted this due to all the new um, guideline changes due to COVID. So we just wanted you to be aware that your self-employed borrowers, um, you know, might get a little frustrated because it is a little bit extra paperwork and we apologize, but really our hands are tied on this one. Thanks, John. I'll just jump in real quick. Uh, one of the things that has been working really well is that myself, John and Brian have the ability to really customize the pre-approvals that we're doing for the office. And that definitely, the feedback I'm getting is that it definitely makes a difference when you're presenting the offer. You typically have the client write a, a personalized letter or whatnot and really try and attach the offer or the, the person to the offer so the seller has an idea of who they're getting, um, who they're, who's buying their home. In terms of the pre-approval itself, what we've been doing is really making it specific to um, the appraisal being done. In some cases, we're ordering it in attorney review, so it's done within 48 hours of attorney review. And then we're delivering a mortgage commitment within 10 days of attorney review. If you can really leverage those two pieces, it takes a lot of the guesswork out for the listing agent, especially in such a competitive market where you're going well above ask. So definitely feel free to leverage us, the three of us, in any of those situations where if it's going to help you win the offer and you really want to stand out and customize it, to deliver those type of turn times is pretty big. Um, and Brian, I don't know. I, what was I going to say? Oh, the one other thing I was going to add was just about the appraisals. In some situations, up to an $805,000 purchase price, one of the benefits that Guaranteed Rate has is that we could do 95% financing. A lot of your big banks require 20% down. So if they're overbidding for the property and they don't have the ability to make up that shortfall, this comes up when they're coming back to us and asking if they can waive the appraisal. So that's a big piece of it because if you have a client putting down 20% on an $800,000 house, in theory, that house could easily, if it did underappraise by 10%, it's not going to change their interest rate. It might, it's going to include PMI, but we discussed that with the client and they have a better sense of the risk of what they're being asked to do when it comes to waiving the appraisal. So it definitely puts the three of us in a position where we could help them take away the fear of the underappraisal, feel comfortable about moving forward, and also deliver tight on the commitment timeline. One thing I want to touch on with uh, jumbo loans, like uh, Matt had mentioned, all the big banks, 20% minimum, some are even 25% minimum for a down payment. We do have a relationship with a company that will allow a 10% down payment up to a $1 million loan amount. So effectively, your client could purchase something for you know, $1,125,000, put 10% down. There is PMI involved, but we'd be able to do that loan versus you know, Wells, Bank of America, Chase, they're not going to touch it. The one thing I'll say with that, because it's not something that we can do in-house because it's above that $765,000 limit, just be a little bit more cautious. Maybe put like a 45 to 60 day closing because um, some of that process, uh, it's not done under our umbrella. So um, we do have options with as little as 10% down up to a $1 million loan amount. Thanks, you guys. That's that's great information. Just so, just recap for me: when people are sitting at home on a Sunday evening writing up an offer, what's the best way for them to know the shortest period of time they can write for a mortgage commitment? Because it sounds like Brian, you're saying a little bit longer on the cheaper ones, John, shorter. People, you know, the agents on this call know that the shortest time on there on that contract is going to help them tremendously get that offer. So let's just be really clear about what you guys want them to be writing for mortgage commitment timing. If, if the loan amount is under 765, the three of us, we do that all in house and have a lot more control over the timeline for that. So what Brian's alluding to is jumbo over 765 that it's a little bit more out of our control. It's still done in house, but it's just, it's a different process. It's more detailed. It's jumbo. It's more involved. So I think from the 10 day term time, I think and John, you could attest to this from a 10 day, from a 765 and below, we could deliver on a, a mortgage commitment in 10 days all day long on that. Absolutely. Okay. That is such an advantage for these guys to be able to, to write that on their contract. So Thanks so much to you guys. What, where are you seeing any landmines? What do people need to be looking out for that you haven't mentioned? Anything else? 
I mean, the one thing that I, I've saw three times already this week is I had people that I pre-approved. Uh, they decided to go with the big bank because of like a lower interest rate. And there were three deals, uh, one in Short Hills, one in Summit, and one in Maplewood that all underappraised with big banks. And when I worked on the numbers with one of the guys, uh, he got this rate from um, Wells Fargo that he was going to have to come up with an extra $36,000 to keep the rate. And I told him if he paid one point with guaranteed rate, it would only be $17,000. So I saved him $19,000 and a five minute conversation. So these big banks are purposely under appraising homes. You know, when there's, when there's 12 or 15 offers on a house, it should never under appraise. That's great. I hope that buy, guy's going to buy you dinner since you saved him 17 grand. <laughs> John likes steaks, I believe. So, so whoever's client it is, let him know. And any other landmines you guys are seeing? All right, we'll move on. We appreciate you guys so much. You do so much for all of us in terms of helping our clients and in terms of supporting us in our own growth. So as always, thank you so, so much. Um, have another exciting announcement. For those of you that don't know, we just welcomed a team of 20 to the Westfield office. Um, Lim Bansis and the Golden Top Producers. Lim and Shannon, are you guys, you guys on the call? Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We are so happy. Any, anything you want to say about uh, how you guys feel about coming to your new home? We're extremely happy. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You know, from the beginning, we wanted to be in Union County because this is my area, but people in my team are super, super excited. Thank you for all the support that you've given us. And uh, I cannot say, I cannot thank Zina, Clara, Shannon for, um, for, for everything that you're doing for us. I know we do have a huge, a huge team. And if you have anyone that is uh, working on, on chore sales and you need any help, please let us know. We are the number one in, in foreclosures here. We do auctions, we do pre-foreclosures, probate, and uh, part of, I will say 95%, no, 80% of our leads are sellers. So if you have buyers that are looking for foreclosures, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you know, as, as you're already starting to understand, we have such a tremendously warm, welcoming culture here in our market centers. And we are all here to help you and make you feel welcome. And thank you for, for you know, first thing in for sharing your knowledge with anybody who, who needs it. I know those short sales get complicated. So you are now our go-to when we need any assistance. Thank you. I just, I just want to know who took that picture. There's a second career waiting for that guy. <laughs> We're missing Howard. Howard. <laughs> Let's not even talk about how much we had to crap out of there, Howard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. Thank you guys for, for jumping in. Um, let's kick it over to Allison. Allison, why don't you uh, tell everybody what we have coming up with career night, how that can help, how that can help everybody. Hey everybody. Um, so we have career night every third Wednesday of the month. So just mark your calendars. It's always Wednesday. Uh, we do an afternoon session at one and then we do an evening session around seven. Um, and this really is a great way to build your downline. If you know anybody that's thinking about getting a real estate license, the state is still offering the courses fully online, which is incredible and it makes it so easy for people. So um, we have this. The link is always the same. It's on the Facebook page. We'll email it and text it to all of you so um, you can keep that on your radar. Uh, we also are reimbursing the cost of real estate school when you join us with your first transaction. So you'll get the price of the tuition back on your first transaction. So, I mean, that's just amazing. Um, there's no reason for anybody not to get a license at this point in time. <coughs> um, we have a bunch of other things going on on the calendar. Always keep an eye out. Um, we're starting an MREA book club. We have our tech classes a few times a week. So if you have any questions or are looking for specific guidance, those are a great resource. Um, Ron and Harjo do an amazing job. Um, guaranteed rates, renovation loan partner um, is gonna be with us on the 24th doing a class. So if you have any questions about 203K loans, renovation loans, Renovation refinance, this is a wealth of information. 
Um, so we have a chock full of, of good things coming up, guys. Um, thank you. You know, I just wanna, I just, you know, let me just go back a slide here, sorry. Allison, before you jump off, you know, I want to just mention that particularly Vanessa and her team come to mind. They've been doing a really great job identifying people that may be going through career transitions and real estate becomes a really amazing, uh, amazing option. So I would love all of you guys to think about who's out there in your world that might need your help, your guidance, your consultation, your mentoring to help mm -hmm new career for themselves. There's a lot of uncertainty out there for a lot of people's jobs. So, you know, don't just think about the opportunity for you to grow your downline and to build profit share, which is, of course, an amazing thing to think about. But think about how many people are, there are out there in the world that, that look up to you and the professional career that you've grown, and they might really want to talk to you about it and hear how it's going. And now you have some wonderful things to share with them as they can basically be reimbursed for attending school in just a few weeks. So absolutely, um, put their thinking hat on about that. Mm -hmm. And Richard is an amazing teacher. He is like, if, if any of you went to real estate school and thought your teacher was like monotonous and boring and very difficult to listen to, Richard is the complete opposite. He explains things so well and people just rave about him. So, um, you know, it's definitely worth it. Awesome. All right, one, in addition to Allison, one of my other favorite people up next, um, Jean, I'd love if you could talk to everybody about our upcoming racial equity town hall, which I'm really excited about. Oh, absolutely. Well, um, I, first I wanted to say thank you to the culture committee for um, everybody chipping in on this and especially Vanessa for introducing us to um, the directors and, and um, everyone over at the South Orange Maplewood Community Coalition on Race. Uh, so they are helping us put together the 2020 Racial Equity Town Hall for Realtors. And that is going to be a virtual workshop on Wednesday, August 26th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Uh, this is going to, the, the goal is to heighten the awareness of unconscious bias in the real estate indus industry and it's going to be presented by the executive director and program director um, from the coalition, as well as two agents from uh, Keller Williams in Maplewood. Uh, once the presentation, the initial presentation is over, there will be breakout rooms of uh, 10 people each uh, monitored by facilitators. And that'll be an opportunity for people to uh, discuss what they've learned or share experiences and then um, regroup as, uh, one big group with any ideas and thoughts to share. So this is really just the beginning of the conversation. Um, we're, we're not out there to, to solve all the problems. We're starting the conversation and, and uh, as the goal is, is to create the awareness. Hey, hey, uh, Jean, um, what should people have in their hand right now? In their hand? Their phone? Their phone. And why should they have their phone in their hand right now? There might be something in the chat that they can click on. Right. So before you guys do that, I want everybody to open up their calendar to Wednesday, August 26th, 10 o'clock. I'm talking slowly because you're all now typing while I'm talking. Wednesday, 10 o'clock. Um, put this in your calendar. And then I want you to go in the chat. You'll see Jackie posted the link so that you can all go on and register. We're really getting a lot of buzz. I think we're going to have an amazing turnout. Um, now, just- yeah, we, we are limited to 300. So register, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I just want to make things fun because, you know, I was singing the praises of our guaranteed rate guys earlier, they decided to sweeten the pot a little bit for everybody on this. And we have a $50 gift certificate. So everybody that registers right now, or those of you that had re registered before now, before the call is over, we're gonna have a drawing. So if you have registered, your name will be in the drawing for a $50 gift certificate that we would like you to use to do something local, support a local restaurant or store, or you know, treat yourself to a little something. So please go ahead, share either, save that link for later or better off, take two seconds and do that right now. What right. am I? Yeah, we'll be choosing the winner before our meeting is over. 
Um, so chances are you guys get a lot of emails during the day, so you may have missed the invitation. So at, make sure you look in your promo tab because it can go, go there. But we're going to be sending out again uh, to all of you. This is the invite that will have the link at the bottom. And this is something that you can forward to any agent from any broker, any allied resource that you would like to invite to the event. You can forward this, this email and we will say it's the invitation. Another thing that uh, Jackie and, and her crew have created is we've got a, a social media graphic as well as verbiage that you can edit, uh, cut and paste with the link so that you can put that out there on uh, your Facebook pages, Instagram, or, um, and hopefully that's a tool that you guys can use to help spread the word on this. Um, reach out to people that you might want to talk about KW and what we do here in terms of um, culture and awareness and, and just being involved in our community. Um, speaking of culture committee, I'd like to welcome Peggy Brugg and Jenny Praval Abbott. These are two new um, agents that have joined the Culture Committee. And if anybody would like to join, please reach out to me or to Shannon or to Vanessa. Um, as we say, the more the merrier. And it, it's not just about Red Day or KW Cares. There's a lot of um, arms that we put out to hug our, our uh, market center and, and our community through the, the Culture Committee. So. Thanks so much, Jean. We really appreciate all the work you've done. All right, please register, guys. Thank you very much. All right, so not, you know what? Um, really quick, quick, quick update. Um, our next transmittal, I just heard yesterday that um, our Summit Market Center will be hitting the $6 million mark. That means agents in our Summit Market Center have put six million dollars in their pockets um, and so we're really really excited about that congrats to all of you that have taken big bites out of that yourself um, and now we will move on to somebody who herself has been an amazing profit share earner um, sue adler thank you so much for being with us today hi there thank you for having me hi guys hi Hey, Sue, before we jump into meat and the potatoes, um, I hope it's okay that I say, speaking of profit share, I saw some interesting numbers yesterday, and your, uh, I, I saw your lifelong total. That's a pretty nice, meaty number. Oh, I don't even know what my total is. Over a million and a half. Oh, wow. That's good. So, uh, yeah, congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. Sue, this market is, is beating everybody up, isn't it? Um... It is, but it's also, there's a lot of good. I mean, I think there's so much opportunity in this market. It's, it depends, it's beating, it's beating up the buyers. I mean, yeah. Yeah. everybody, up. it's definitely beating up the buyers and it's the seller's turn. So it's always a good market for someone. And, um, you know, it's, it's like you know, the early 2000s again. What I, what I think is helpful for agents that I talk to is there's a lot of information out there, what to say, what to say to buyers, what to say to sellers. Can you take us through, let's, let's start first with sellers. What are the key points that you're making when you're sitting down with sellers who are contemplating listing their homes right now? Well, I think the first thing is to meet them where they are in the process and where they are like mindset wise about COVID. Um, a lot of the older people are still uncomfortable having people come through their homes. So um, we, and, and also just to show them data on the market and really show them what the demand is because otherwise it's all talk. So I think really backing things with data, I can show you, I can show you a couple things on my screen that I have pulled up if you want me to share with Absolutely. you. Absolutely, thanks Sue. Okay, so let's start with, um, this, is a, this is something that I'm always sharing with people. So um, have you seen this before, this showing time graph? Yep, we actually looked at it earlier in the call today. So oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I apologize then. Okay. No, but but I'd love to hear what you say to people about so, it. So the first the first thing is, you know, when say when people say, well, it's the end of the summer, there's no demand anymore, you know, we missed the whole market. This is something you show them. It backs that. It's like you might say that, but look where we are this year over last year. And um, and then I get into we keep track of I'll unshare this now, we keep track of week over week. Um, year over year, 
where we are the same week in terms of how many have gone under contract and we're now breaking it out by price range as well. So the more data that you have on this kind of stuff, just show them the data. I mean, now what's happening is inventory in some of the towns, we track it in each town, inventory in each town and each price range is actually different year over year. There's some, like in Chatham, for example, inventory is higher, um, the same or higher as it was last year. So it's the demand in certain towns is not the same as it is in other towns. So it's really important to know your market or the market that you're having that conversation about, not speak globally about things. But I always start with this graph because, um, you know, the one just showing the demand there, but then you chunk it down into their specific area price range and everything like that. Um, and now that a lot of these uh, sales are closing out, we're going to, we're going to be able to see where things are closing because that was always a big guessing game. But um, you're know, looking at the ones that have been, you know what to do with comps, you know, looking at the ones that have been sitting on the market, obviously those are overpriced so you adjust for that. And I'm going through all this now on my screen with people. So I'm meeting them in person to see the house now, um, but then we're getting back online and we're doing everything. I'm sharing my screen with them instead of meeting them in person, doing all of this, you know, sharing a screen in person, because I just feel like it's safer and they actually appreciate it too. Um, so we're just, you, you know, then, then have the DocuSign kind of ready to go and you walk through that with them there and you have them sign the DocuSign while you're on the call with them, you know, to move it forward. But, you know, we, we're doing something also called our, sh our safe home, um, home buying and selling process. So we have that really spelled out for people as much as we're, as much as we can, we're doing digitally now, we're doing digital showcases on every single listing, um, including video, Matterport. Uh, we're not, you know, public open houses, honestly, we're doing those as a last resort, you know, for houses that are sitting. But what we're finding is, when we're doing the on-demand open houses, like think Peloton, I mean, you have the live rides. Um, so you did a live open house Zoom and people will register. That's only like a half hour, but then those live forever. So those become your on-demand rides or on-demand um, open houses that people are looking at 24 seven and we're getting 20, 30, 40 registrations on those. So by the time they've looked at everything online, and this is what we're explaining to our sellers, that's when they then come through and they pretty much make a quick decision on the house at that point. So you're only getting the really serious qualified buyers who have vetted the house um, versus, you know, when you do these public open houses, especially first weekend, and we we're, we're only allowing um, one family per floor at a house because it's, you know, because of COVID, we don't want crowded houses. So people are lined out in the heat outside and it could be neighbors who are, a, a serious buyer may not want to wait 45 minutes to an hour to get into a house and when you have neighbors lined up there. So when you explain it this way to the sellers, they actually really appreciate it. And they say, oh yeah, I don't really want a public open house. Let's do, let's do it this way. Um, and yes, and, and then we also say, look, you might, if you want one, that's fine. We'll do whatever you want. So we give them that option because some people do want the open houses. Um, but it, so it's all it's all on how you say it to people. Um, and yes, you do get neighbors at open houses. And yes, those are potential listing appointments. So it's all your personal preference of how you want to structure that. Um, so that was, that's pretty much how we do it. And then in terms of just getting the house ready for sale, uh, we're, we're spending a lot of time doing that. So it obviously shows on staging everything like we've done before, but um, really just making sure they understand this is not your typical August, September market. This is, there is still demand there and you show them the demand. That graph shows the demand. So what would you say if, uh, to a seller who's sitting down with you trying to decide if they should do it now or if they should wait? Well, I showed them the demand and we don't know what next year is going to bring. I mean, we have no idea what's going to, are, what will the rates be? Um, what will the demand, you know, the, one of the only reasons our market is so strong right now is because there's hardly any inventory and the demand outweighs the supply. I mean, it's all it's economics 101. We don't know what's, what next year, I still think there will be demand. I do think though that um, the supply, people are gonna start jumping in. I think that's what's going to change things because I don't think we're gonna to continue to see the bidding wars to the level that we're seeing them if, if the inventory starts to rise because the buyers will have more options. 
it'll be a more balanced market for sure, which is probably better for us, you know, um, cause our buyers won't be as frustrated, but for the seller, from a seller, we're talking to a seller right now. So they can't go wrong with doing this now. Um, and guess what? If it's, if you're not happy, then, Hey, well, we could always take it off the market and put it back on in the spring, you know? It's awesome. Sue, so what are you instructing your, your buyer agents on your team to be saying to help buyers who, you know, they really are the ones that feel bullied right now. Yeah. What can you, what are you telling your buyer agents to help your buyers get through this process? So, um, so I've been doing a lot of trainings on multiple offer, you know, how to, how to win the multiple offer situation. And um, actually, if you look at Sarita Duo, did an, I don't know if you saw her Zoom on that, but she did a, I, I'll, I, I'll find, find the link and send it to you, but she did a Zoom on winning out in multiple offers. It was really, I thought it was really good. I played that for my team as well. But, you know, you want to meet people where they are and it's, it's like that with, with anything. But what I'm finding as a listing agent is we're seeing a lot of people backing out of deals the next morning. So it's, that's extremely frustrated. So we need to, we need to make sure that we're saying to our buyers, before they make their offer, um, hey, look, tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up and say, oh my God, what have I done? You know, you're going to have buyer's remorse. It is totally normal to have the buyer's remorse. So, so we used to do this. I learned this from my dad back in when I first started in real estate. He used to have these little pill vials and he labeled them buyer's remorse pills. And he would put these M&Ms in there and he, we would hand the buyer's remorse pills to the buyers and say, take two of these in the morning or two of these before you go to bed and then take two more in the morning because you're going to wake up and feel it. And then, then take two of these pills and then remember that, um, re remember the, the, the process we're going through now. Let's talk about why you love the house, why this is a, so you want to keep bringing them back to that beforehand and remind them of this because then it'll be like, oh yeah, you told me this would happen versus them waking up in the morning and feeling like, oh my God, what have I done? So that's a really important thing to do right now because I can't tell you how many, and now what I'm doing is when, when I have people who win out in bidding wars, I'm actually coaching the agents to say this to their buyers because it's, it's one of those things. It's just the buyers are backing out. Like I have never seen before, you know? So the other thing is I'm having, we have the husband and wife. This is how I'm coaching my agents, husband and wife they have them bid against each other. So, you know, because it's one of these processes where how, how do we know where to go where we're not out of our comfort zone? So um, your husband says, I'll pay, let's say the asking price is $8.99. So would you pay $8.99? Yes. Would you pay $9.25? Yes. Would you pay $9.50? Uh, not so sure. Okay, would you pay $9.30? So you kind of have them go back and forth and one person's going to say, you know something, I'm, I'm kind of done here. And then the other one, because this usually happens, the other one's like, well, I really want it, honey. And, you know, so I would come a little bit higher. So, so you listen to that conversation amongst them because too often they have that conversation um, without you in the room. So you actually can coach them through this whole process. Would you back, so if you, and, and then you say to them, okay, would you at 9.35, whatever that number is that they just decided on, Tomorrow morning when you wake up, are you still going to feel good about that number if you got the house? Because you can't back out. Like, this is, this is it. Like, let's pinky swear on this one. And um, so, that, so we need to just kind of guide them to where they really both commit to it. They commit to it. Um, the other thing, once, when you submit your offers and you have, definitely do a letter from your buyers, for, have the buyers write a letter for sure. But when you're submitting your offer, have a conversation with, if you're, not, it's a shot in the dark. Um, so have the conversation with the listing agents after you've submitted your offers. Look, if you think your buyers would, if, if you know that your buyers would come up to a higher number if they not, if they're, they don't get the house or whatever, have that conversation with a listing agent because um, too often also we're seeing people once they don't get a house, trying to bump everybody out of attorney review at this point. And let's have these conversations before we get to that point, because then it's honestly, it's, it's, it could be too late because your offer then could be used because they've already feel committed to another buyer, but also 
the communication, like all these offers are sent, but the communication is really important. That part is really, really important because um, if you just kind of want to know, I remember when I was working with buyers, I would always just submit my offer, call the listing agent, where do we stand? How do we, how are we doing? When you ask how many offers are you expecting, the agent's not going to know that in advance because they just show up. You know, it's a best and final or highest and best, whatever we want to call it. Those offers just show up. So we don't know that in advance, but, but afterwards, you know, if you, if you, th if things are close and we can try to tweak offers to get the seller the highest, best price in terms, but also the buyer who would be coming up, they may not get a second chance unless you make that call to this, to the, to the listing agent. Um, not saying it's always going to happen, but you, but being an advocate for your client, that's what I would do. Like most things in life, more communication is better, especially yeah. between agents, right? Yeah, exactly. Don't just send over your offer and then that's the end of it. Now, will you always be able to hop on the phone with a listing agent? If I have like 10 offers on a property, that may not, just may not happen. But, um, you know, usually when I receive the offers, if there's some that are close, I'm actually calling the, the buyer's agents and trying to tweak those offers anyway, because I can see, you know, one usually will have a higher price and one will usually have the best terms. So if we can see where that ends up, if we can tweak those top offers, you know, I'm doing a, a service for my client, but also the agents, I mean, the buyers who didn't write really strong offers, if we can tweak those and they can get the house, that's good too. So, you know, it's, it's never over till it's over that way. And, um, yeah. Uh, also, I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of people putting in now. Uh, the buyers are buying home warranties. I've gotten a couple of offers recently that way, where the buyers are buying home warranties for their buyer, um, or, and it covers the seller to closing. I'm also seeing people rushing in and getting home inspections done, and then buying and waiving their inspection contingency. That's huge, guys. If you can do something like that, that is honestly huge. So. Um, whatever you can do to make your offer the strongest and the least risk to the seller, that's, that's the way to go. So as always, you have so much wisdom. And, and one of the things I love about Keller Williams in general and you specifically is this culture of sharing. You know, I remember being in the, in this business for a very short period of time. And you said to me, Shannon, don't worry. There's plenty of business to go around. It, it helps us all to share each other, to share with each other. Sure. And, you, yeah, you, I learn from you guys every day. You always live that way. I do have one other really important question, though. Um, and I'll let you go. I know you have an appointment. What's your favorite number? My favorite number? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I have a favorite number. You got this. Um, What's your, I your favorite? I think your favorite yeah. number ought to be a million and a half. No, it's my favorite number is one. Favorite number one. Okay, because uh, before you jumped on the call, we're actually having a drawing for everybody that signed up for our uh, racial equity town hall. So apparently, it's going to be the first person who signed up is going to get a fifty dollars gift card. I already signed up. Well, if you were the first one that signed up, you're going to get fifty bucks thanks to guaranteed rate. So Jackie's going to, Jackie's going to. If I if I do get it, just donate to KW Cares. Uh, I mean, well, we love you, Sue. Thank you so 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 much. Thank you, guys. If anybody needs anything, just call me. Thank you, Sue. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Sue. How awesome is she? Highly awesome. I know. She knows a lot of stuff. So the last thing we have to do before we wrap up is just do that drawing. Let me just, uh, hey, Jackie, are you around? One second. Jackie is, yeah. Okay, so are we I'm might have to call on somebody. Oh, Jackie, so Sue's favorite number is one. Check the registrations to see who's 50 bucks heavier. Yeah, so we got, what was it, number one? The favorite number is one. Okay, so this is from today. Uh, da, 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 da. What was it? Let's go back this way from today. So the first one today. Today's the 14th. Was Abby Tanzer. Woohoo! Abby Tanzer. Abby. Awesome. All right, Abby, we will leave a $50 gift certificate in your mailbox in Summit. Thank you, guys. Right. Thanks, guys. Everybody have a great weekend. Sell lots of houses. Stay safe and healthy.
Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Shannon. My pleasure.